Let's do a more detailed look at Hugo Comte's lighting. Style has changed a lot over the years, but I'm concentrating on some of the early work. A lot of that also was shot on medium format slide film, but there's key characteristics that we can kind of work on. In these early images, the foreground's really underexposed. There's not much light moving into the body, which allows the highlights to really come forward when they are used. We're going to concentrate on this shoot. I've made one simulation. Final image, and I've also just pushed the contrast in both of them so we can see how they compare and then also made them black and white. It's really useful sometimes to look at an image in black and white so that you can see where the light is coming from, what the light levels are and what the contrast is. So that really underexposed skin tone of foreground, that can be created by two large umbrellas or two large octaves. Got one with a grid on, but it's open front. And then I've got a second one with a grid on, but also it has a diffusion panel over it. And these are low powered. So I'm on like six, six and a half. A little bit of a silvery highlight coming forward, which is great because that's coming from the inside of that octa or an umbrella. If you... But we're really setting everything back super underexposed. You can see that set up in one of his shots here. Another key detail is how he treats the background by throwing light across it. He doesn't light a background really smoothly. So we're going to do a similar thing by having a big octa on one side, and then I've got a grid on the other side. You could have two octas, that would also work. But it's really about varying the angle of where that octa hits. And we could just play around with that until we get something that we're happy with. The background's almost blown out in some areas, so it's about pushing the power up or down and getting something that creates that level of contrast that works well. Polyboards again, just to flag that light so it's not like bleeding back through the image too much. Just looking at the background in these images, there's quite a difference in the contrast. There's a big bright light that's pushing, just like raking through the image. And it, he has a lot of really great highlights that come forward on the skin. And to make it easier, I've separated the highlights out a little bit. And I've also put a bluer gel on the highlight, a uh, warming gel that's the underexposed area. So we're warming the skin and then we're putting cool highlights over the top of it. And one way of doing that is having reflectors with grids on them. So we're firing it like past the face. You don't want to fire directly at the face. You want the light to kind of glance across the skin. The other way of doing that is maybe having silver reflectors or parabolics like I've got here. The parabolics have a real silvery sheen to them. And again, I'm pushing the light either down across the model or into the floor and bouncing it up. It's about catching almost like secondary highlights across the skin. You can angle them down. That's kind of really important. You can see that highlight moving across the face. And it's just about picking areas that you think work well with the shape of the face. I put a basic curve on these two images to bring them into the same kind of tonal register. So and again, you can see here, there's highlights sitting on the shoulder, there's highlights sitting on the forehead, but there's also this warm light that's coming across the body. And, that, and this is still from one of his early shoots. It's on YouTube. An assistant here is holding hot light. So he's mixing like strobe and constant light together. Uh, aperture that's probably around like 16 or 22. He's going to have a lot of power coming from these lights. Constant light would need to be quite strong. You don't really want to diffuse this light too much. It's about getting that contrast off the skin tone. We can focus the beam of light or we can pull the beam of light back and vary the angle. You can see how it's really shaping the face. Someone's moving around with that light and following where the model's posing. And if we put all those things together, we've got uh, underexposed front lights that are coming. Then we've got this layer of lights that is adding our skin tone highlight passing across the model is important. And then we've got this uneven lighting at the backdrop and separating the backdrop out from the model. You need quite a large space to be able to do that, but I've grouped this a little bit tighter so that if you were shooting in a, in a studio, you could achieve this also. I put a basic curve on this as if it's kind of similar to a, a film curve. It's really about creating multiple light sources that push across the model and you're playing like soft underexposed with intense, like fairly hard highlights. If you're working with a makeup artist that can give you like a raw skin look, but that will really help with making those highlights come forward, bring an extra layer to the imagery. 